Uh, and welcome. I'm joined by Rajendra Pawar, founder of the NIT Group of Companies. Mr. Pawar, thank you very much for speaking with us. So there is a digital future ahead, and uh, a lot of companies in the ecosystem, the services companies, product, consumers who are demanding products, are all helping shape this future. So before I come to that, let me ask you a more simple question. What kind of gadgets or devices are you carrying with you? I carry a smartphone. Okay. And um, it's Apple. I can talk about the brand. Uh, and I use it quite extensively, and I have to say a lot of it is voice. Mm -hmm. But obviously, I have the data that <laughs> I'm referring to my yeah. talk, but I'm much more a person-to-person -person speaker, but the smartphone now gives tons of information data around every conversation you want to have. Right. And so tell me, in, in, in the world that you work in and deal with, uh, where people are interacting, consumers I mean, through smartphones like yours, and demanding products or services being delivered to them, uh, or smarter touch points. What does this all mean for this whole ecosystem in which you are an integral part, right down to the point where you're creating the supply of talent? So first of all, you know, when we think of data or data science, uh, we somehow get a very formidable imagery of complex mathematics. Hmm. That is only one part of it. But also look at the fact that every person with a smartphone is a photographer now. Hmm. Okay, not just still, but video. Hmm. So that is a ton of data as well. And we've always said that a picture is worth a thousand words. So you now are beginning to see the integration of images, text, numbers, all of that coming together to present information in a much richer form. So, and it's starting with the consumer. I think that's the big difference. Hmm. And not starting with the CIO. Hmm. It's not starting with a smart researcher you have in, hmm. with a PhD, is starting with the end consumer in whose hand is a very information rich, data rich device. Hmm. And they're capturing that information. <clears throat> and everything they capture gets onto Facebook or Twitter or wherever. So there's a huge explosion of data in many forms. Hmm. So this is actually now consumer driven. Hmm. So they are in a position to send that information hmm. And in return, they don't want just some two lines of stuff. They want equally rich hmm. forms of information. Experience. This is the, the starting point. The starting point. Yeah. Okay. So now, as information scientists or as computer scientists, what do we have to do? We have to manage this massive explosion of all forms of data and then put you know, tags on it if you want or categorization and store it and organize it so that the next time somebody has a question, which could be the same consumer, your ability to you know, work through this mass of data to see patterns and trends and then give them an answer. The complexity of that and the volume of that has gone through the roof. Uh -huh. So this is an oversimplified version, but the important thing to remember is the end user and the consumer is the, is the source of much of this data uh -huh. and has got accustomed to a very rich interface. Right. And so that's, your, that's, and that's where the demand the is coming from. Yeah. Right. Demand so, and the nature of demand. Right. And, and tell us about the supply side of this and how are you uh, as, as a group with presence in various uh, sort of uh, aspects of this value chain catering to this? So well, uh, as you know, we've always had a very interesting organization structure. For the first uh, 23 years, it was one organization which had a software business and a learning business mm. joined at the hips. Mm. And the experience from the ground was informing Hmm. the talent building portion hmm. what to do. Hmm. Then we demerged the two companies when they were large enough and last uh, 11 years now the software company right. is listed and independent. But very much into the future because of a past thing of being hmm. not Y2K but new technologies oriented. Hmm. So a very large number of projects in the last many years around subjects which you will now say need data science or whatever, it has kind of incrementally grown over a period of time. And always starting with, you know, what does the consumer have in their hand and where are they starting? So mm. a lot of our customers, old as well as new ones, are wanting that consumer experience. Whether it's a cab company where the customer coming on a flight gets not just a notification but the face of the driver. Mm. The driver gets the face. Mm. And so So did you things, work on that? Yeah, we've, yeah, we've, okay, we've been doing that okay. for a large American firm. So that through to all other kinds of transactions. So it is just that the, the media rich nature of the device in the hands of the consumer has come into the equation. Hmm. 
and changed the picture and made it richer, much more vast. So what that translates into is very much larger volumes of data that comes in. So a picture, a picture is much more than a mm. thousand words in that mm. sense. And then you have to organize it, process it, categorize mm. it, and, and then cull out mm. the meaning of it. Yeah, so, and get the signal so from the noise. we have a very big ga gaming company in Las Vegas, mm. which profiles its consumer to a level of detail you'd be surprised to know. Mm. And we heard some examples today of mm -hmm. the person was talking about a uh, gaming company and he said that you checked into that hotel mm -hmm. and you're playing the game and you're losing money and suddenly you'll get a notification that says free dinner, mm -hmm. okay, from the same place. So mm -hmm. it is, um, it's been, a, it's not a kind of a sharp right, right or left, it's been a continuum mm -hmm. for companies who are in the cutting edge. That becomes a starting point and that's a business in itself that also then informs mm. the education part of the, or not, the education company to look at what do now, what do companies need, what skills do they need. And so the subject of data sciences is becoming an important area. So that's not a one week program or a one month program. There actually it's much more a master's subject. And is it the hottest new thing that people want it's, to do? It's everybody's talking about it. The numbers haven't quite built up mm. because the front end task mm -hmm for our software companies to go and propose a solution which needs all of this. That uh, proposition building skill is being built from our experience and this will be another case. But to me the back end large numbers which are required I think that is being now prepared. So uh, at, we have a university as you know in Indiana. Mm -hmm. So a masters in data sciences is now getting launched. Mm -hmm. And that has got launched by working with three leading IT companies. Mm -hmm who want a talent pipeline. Hmm. So who are actually informing hmm. us what in their view is what data science is, is for the kind of projects they see. Right. And, and so you know, to come back to where we started, we're saying if we are shaping the future of digitization or the digital future, data science, the understanding of it and the ability to mine large amounts of information to find the signal from the noise is really a critical component going forward. In Would much that be of it, not yeah. all of it, in yeah. much of it, yeah. I think it, in much of it is that. Hmm. In, in a lot of it is also about very media rich information. Hmm. It may not be huge volume, hmm. but it, the, the volume comes because of the quality of you know the, the information and the imagery you have. So hmm. the volume is large because there are very high res pictures for example. Hmm. So it may be much more about processing hmm. imagery hmm. and images. Hmm. So if you look at the whole area of geographical information systems. It's not millions of images you have to search for, mm. but very high quality images of a certain type. So it is this processing which is required and it could at one end be a lot of statistics, it could be a lot of mathematics or it could be algorithms and some of it is already there in large numbers. Right. But I guess just like we managed to bring in at one time a very large number of commerce students to learn IT mm. because financial systems had to be built. Mm. Now we are having to motivate the maths and the statistics students to come in and look at data sciences. Mm -hmm. We are having to motivate geography students for geographical information systems. So this crossovers are happening at the education level. Mm -hmm. But fortunately this country has unlimited talent. So yeah. And I was going to scale. come to that as, a, as my last question as well. So what are the two or three things that you see could, which could be the big uh, uh, opportunity points as well as the sort of weakness stroke threat points? Uh, in our attempt as a country and enterprises to move towards this digital future? So I guess, uh, and I guess that's what our big companies are doing, that the people who have to uh, be at the front end mm. to co talk to customers, uh, corporate customers, about how to use information to serve their customers better. Mm. I think that our conventional systems analysts have to learn that. And it's not that they have to not be able to learn it. Okay? Mm. They just have to learn that. Mm. And they have a lot of bright people at the front end who can do that. So they have to make that transition. So they talk to the customer in the language, uh, which helps them to recognize that they, the, the con customers, consumers, how are they to be served and how to make sense of the data they are getting. But back end, to me, I think we have a lot of scalability. So that is a big wave mm. and uh, our system will respond. I think it has responded okay. in the past. It will respond. So. Mm -hmm. So I see it as very scalable. So even if you were to say, we, we've kept saying that we have good people in maths. Mm. That is because basic mathematical foundations are there. Mm. For this, we may need a, a master's level mm. student mm. in maths, okay? Or a bachelor's level student in maths and statistics, which fortunately also we have 
capability except that they haven't been looked after very well so far. Mm. Now we will see a very good um, opportunity emerging. So we have to swing a large number of people like we did with engineers at one time. Mm. We'll have to swing a large number of engineers. You do know that we, in the year 2000, we had only 90,000 as the annual intake for engineers. Mm. Today, the capacity is 1.3 million. Mm. That had become 1.3 million five or six years ago. Mm. So in a decade, our system mm. at a national level responded. Mm. Now we have to do that for maths. We have to do it for statistics. We have to mm. do it for the other subjects. So to me, I think the scalability of talent is very much part. So we have to just be a little ahead. So, and and so you didn't quote any weaknesses or threats? Well, I think it's how fast we act. I think mm. that's it. How responsive are So, you're saying it's more about losing potential opportunity yeah, rather than actually getting hit yeah, because I we don't. Think, I don't think we should get overly concerned about threat because who else is there? Mm. But just that the, the window of opportunities don't stay for too long. Mm. So, we have to reorient our front-end business uh, analysts to look at this area afresh. We have to reorient them. It's not about fresh as going in mm. like that, okay, at one level. At the other level, we have to build strong back-end processes to scale up doing those mathematical modeling kind of exercises with large number of people. So the old model is not gone. It's just mm. the talent which we need, is the skills that we need are new. Right. And, and, and we'll, we we'll obviously see a, a fresh batch of data scientists soon emerging from yes, the university. Yes, on the cards, yes. Right. Congratulations for that. And thank you so much for speaking to us. Thanks.